it's 5 a.m. here in northwestern Rwanda. As you can see, it's still dark and very cold as well. Right now, we're about 2,000 meters above sea level. Uh, but today's the day. Today's the day that we go to see the mountain gorillas in their natural habitat here in Volcanoes National Park in northwestern Rwanda. I'm very excited. Um, I don't know exactly what to expect in terms of how long the trek will be. I think it's going to be a few hours at least until we actually see them. Fingers crossed we, we see the family of gorillas um, today, this morning. This is uh, Mount Sabino. Mount Sabino. And you said it's about 4,000 meters? Sabino is uh, 3,800. Then uh, when you come to the longer one, it's called Karisimbi, which is 4,500 meters above wow. sea level. And you've got mountain gorillas in both? Yes. So when you get to the park, the first thing you have to do is go through the checkpoint. At the bottom now, this is basically the area where they assign you into groups and you can grab a coffee, that kind of thing. It's just gone six o'clock in the morning, but we're already seeing some great views. I'm very excited. Okay, so that was a really straightforward process. We met um, the man that's going to be taking us up the Patience. mountain. Patience, very nice man, as well as the family that we're going to be going up, up the mountain with. Uh, we're seeing the Sousa family of gorillas. Uh, does this ring a bell, Farouk? Do you know the Sousa family? Yes, it is the biggest gorilla family we have here. Wow. Uh, the only challenge that those gorillas used to be very far, and all the guidebooks talk about that. So many customers were not so much into tracking there, apart from the feet people. Though today I've been told that they walked closer okay. to the edge of the park. Uh, as per yesterday's tracking. We're off from our start point, which is about an hour and a half from uh, the lodge that we met at. Patience, I'm uh, I'm filming the experience on my GoPro. <laughs> yeah, you can do. You're starting. Yeah. Going to the gorilla. And this is the Susa. The family Susa. <laughs> So patience, are you speaking with the trackers right now? Yes, yes, yeah. About the whereabouts. The, the trackers asking uh, how is the situation up there, if they found them and where. They tell them they told me that soon. They want to tell me which entrance we're going to use. Okay. Yes. So all the time the gorillas keep moving, we keep moving. <laughs> So now we are entering the jungle. It's uh, our guide with us as well as one man with a gun in case we come across buffalo or mountain elephants, both of which can be quite aggressive, we're told, so it's just for safety. And we're told that we're about 20 minutes away from the Susa family that we're tracking.
can't. He's the king. He's the king. Yes. Oh, he's beautiful. Okay, stay still. Okay. We make like two steps back. Roll it. So we're on the descent. It was honestly the most incredible experience. We sort of ended up going around in circles looking for them because they move about. So we moved around for, I don't know, 20, 25, 30 minutes. And then obviously we found two silverbacks with the family and the babies at the end. Amazing experience. Um, a guide, Patience, was awesome as well. Took the time to answer questions at the end. By me is her, our porters come and carry some of the stuff it's a good way of keeping employment up in the area they come on most of the walks <laughs> i think you know when you consider the cost of doing that it's one thousand five hundred dollars for the permit to trek with gorillas per day um, per person so it's obviously a, a lot of money but worth every penny and of course you know a certain amount goes into conservation in the area keeping the gorilla safe and giving back to the community as well improving infrastructure etc so it's just a worthwhile cause but also you know selfishly just a dream fulfilled an amazing experience you go and you made it back in one piece amy one piece. <laughs> thank you the local arts and crafts market here and all of this work is produced by local people and it's amazing. I can't even draw a stick man personally so I don't know where people start but they use fabrics bought from the local market and turn them into art. And they're explaining to us that all profits from here go towards uh, women and young children in the local community and a lot of the students come here as well to, to produce the the work and also to work here at the weekends so it's also a source of employment and the work is amazing this is amazing wow